And uh, I'd like to welcome everyone to the, uh, the second annual DEF CON uh, Comedy Jam. Uh, if anyone who was here last year may recall that uh, basically this was uh, two hours of assorted fail within the industry. Uh, this is your opportunity to uh, snark or be snarked, as the case may be. Uh, I have an esteemed grip, uh, group of panelists up here who I'll allow to introduce themselves quickly, and then we'll dive straight into the action. Hi, I'm, I'm uh, Robert Hansen, R Snake. Um, I run Sec Theory and Hackers.org hackers .org and Slackers.org. I'm Dave Maynard. Rich Mogul. I'm Larry Pesci from Polycom Security Weekly. I'm James Arlen, but you might know me better as Mercurial. Okay, so, and uh, I'm David Mortman uh, from Emergent Chaos and from NewSchoolSecurity.com. And um, before uh, we get started, I just want to comment, let you know that feel free to ask questions uh, throughout the panel. You don't need to wait till the end. Uh, there are micro there's a microphone over here, or um, you can shout really loudly. Uh, I will be over the course of the uh, panel. I'm going to be making bread up here as well. So if you ask a, a reasonable question or at least a funny one, um, you might get lucky and get uh, some bread thrown at you. No. <laughs> that was neither a good question nor a funny one. Sorry. <laughs> Okay, so um, we actually, like I said, the theme of the panel is fail, and uh, for those of you who remember last year, Chris Hoff was here, and he did some uh, wonderful uh, bulleting for us, and unfortunately he was not able to be here because some other conference called away instead. So our first fail is that Chris was lame and didn't show up. Um, however, we do have, um, for those of you who follow him on Twitter know that lately he's been using this whole uh, squirrel motif. So uh, I think it was, uh, was it Jack Daniel? Jack Daniel? Stand up, Jack. We love you, Jack. Thank you, Jack. Um, brought a, um, we brought a mascot here, a, a representation of Chris. <laughs> it's anatomically correct. <laughs> you must not know Everybody Chris. knows I know. <laughs> Man crush. That enough said. Okay, so um, for those of you who have been... Uh, Following Twitter recently in the last couple of weeks, um, there's been a, an event coming. I think it's uh, tomorrow night. There's going to be a. It is tomorrow night, correct? Tomorrow night. Um, it's a. It, there is going to be a uh, women of security pillow fight. And uh, yes, I was like pillow fight. How do I get in? Um, <laughs> you have to pay. Um, and there was a lot of controversy about this on Twitter. And it reminded me of a, of a sort of long-standing rant that I've been, I've been working on, which is that we as an industry, when it comes to welcoming women to our industry, suck. And we're talking beyond fail. Yeah. Now, the impressive thing is, as individuals, I have discovered that we all, we all do a great job being very welcoming, but yet as a group, we, we fail uh, terribly. And in fact... Uh, I was talking with a professor at Stanford a while back, and they said, you know, the great thing about hackers is they're just like the beatniks in the 40s and the 50s and so. They love to wear black, they love to smoke, and as a group, they think that they don't hate women. <laughs> Beer has arrived. <laughs> Thank you, Martin. Beers are courtesy of Martin McKay from the Network Security Podcast. And... and we're, we're going to be getting our money back on this from the government. <laughs> <laughs> so, thank you, Martin. Wait, is there a beer bailout now? <laughs> what do you want After this much beer, we're going to need bailing out, dude. The clunkers for beers program. <laughs> so, um, so, as I was saying... Does anybody have ice? Ice? Anyone, did anyone bring ice with them? So uh, fail. Um, <laughs> So anyway, so as I was saying, you know, so as an industry, we really fail here, though. As individuals, you know, we try. Um, we could try harder. And I think we could do a lot better as an industry if we were, if we were a lot more diverse. Um, so I'm going to take a little survey. If you are male, white, or Asian, please raise your hand. Okay. okay I did this backwards. Okay. Everyone put their hands down. If you are a person of color who is not male or have a vagina, please raise your hand. Okay, that's better than it was two years ago, but it's still really lousy. This conference will be a lot more fun if we're a lot more diverse, and the industry as a whole... Dude, you just lost bread for the rest of the conference. 
that was lame. I mean, we're not talking fail. We're just lame. Uh-huh. Oh, he raised his hand saying he was a girl. Uh, uh, yeah, so anyway. Maybe he is a girl. You never know. Yeah, you never know. <laughs> Give it to but he was smirking. Oh, so. <laughs> anyway, so in solidarity, um, uh, I think it was Nikita, or it was Shirtle on Twitter, suggested that if, if, if she were to come here, she would make up shirts that said Team JJ. And in solidarity with the 4% women who are here today, I will be wearing this the rest of the day. So, so you're going you're gonna to take the same comments other women do with the, take it off, take it off. <laughs> you're such a tease. And there ends my fail. Rob? All right. Hello, everybody. Can you hear me? <clears throat> My voice is a little screwed up from yelling at people at the Microsoft party last night. And if I look like I'm in pain, it's because I am in pain. Um, I don't remember doing anything. It might have been a drunken, crazy, acrobatic masturbation session, but it's the wrong shoulder. So <clears throat> <clears throat> I was told that I should just stretch before I do it, and uh, everything will be okay. So um, I'm, I'm just going to breeze through uh, this, and, and uh, I hope you guys find this as funny as I do. Um, this isn't ac- I'm not actually as dumb as this slide deck makes me sound, uh, but uh, just imagine that I am for, for, uh, for a few minutes. So what's that? Yeah, I know, I know, I know. So 3.5, uh, Firefox 3.5 had a vulnerability very recently, I'm sure a lot of you saw. Um, and, you know, being a security guy, I wanted to go download um, and get the newest version. Um, the problem with the Firefox normal update mechanism, sometimes on my computer doesn't work all that great, and I personally think there's tons of problems with it. Uh, so I personally just like to download the whole binary myself. So um, um, I went to a page, and I'm sorry for those in the back. Uh, I'll, I'll, don't worry, I'll, I'll uh, tell you what it says. Um, I use a tool called Request Policy to detect where I'm going to go. So it, if I'm going to go to a page and it tries to redirect me to another domain, it'll tell me that it's about to redirect. So I go to download.mozilla.org slash blah, 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 and it tries to redirect me to somewhere in Turkey. So uh, I'm not going to download anything from a place that names their country after a bird. So... <laughs> I hit refresh, <clears throat> and uh, now we're going to the Netherlands. And there's two slashes. That guy was high when he built that page. There's just no way I'm downloading it from there. How about this one? Germany? Um, how many world wars have they started? <laughs> just, I'm just not going to download it from there either. ZA. Was that South Africa? Is that right? Yeah. South Africa? Isn't that apartheid thing? I don't think, no. They're, no. Brazil, I think they have the highest per capita instance of leprosy in the world. That sounds a little backwards to me. I don't think so. But they have a cool movie named after them. (laughs) Sweden, so I've hung out with the Swede, the hack Swede guys. Um, Is anybody here from Sweden? No? You're lying, by the way. You're all from Sweden. I know. Um, I've hung out with these guys, and I know the Irish say they can drink, but the Swedes, man... I just don't trust those guys. And, and I try, I'm like, hey, so uh, how do you say something in Swedish, like, like hello or whatever? And he's like, blah, 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 kook. I'm like, are you trying to tell me, that, tell me to say to other people, like, I love cock? He's like, oh, my God, you totally speak Swedish. <laughs> <clears throat> I.E., so um, that's Ireland, yeah? No, I.E., yeah. Yeah. Ireland, yeah. So I've hung out in Ireland, too. And those guys, uh, they like to drink a lot. Don't get me wrong. I still think Swedes drink more. What's that? Someone's, oh, all right. Um, but um, I just didn't get the impression that they really cared about my security while I was there. I mean, like, everything was just sort of hodgepodge, like, show up, like, oh, you're a speaker, great. I'm like, I don't need a badge or anything. I can just walk in, sure. Yeah, so I, I don't think so. I don't, I don't think so. So Japan, I'm pretty sure, hey, Dave, how many... Nuclear bombs, did we drop on those people? Two. Two? See, Dave's smart. Most people say one. Um, aren't they pissed? <laughs> right? I'd be pissed. Like, fuck you guys. You dropped nuclear bombs on us. No. I'm not downloading it from there either. CH. Hey, Dave, how do you spell Czech Republic? Yeah, right. So I'm not downloading it from there either. 
Uh, Romania, I think most of the auction fraud came from there. Uh, Russia, I mean, no. Uh, I mean, Canada, well, I mean, they, they're pretty close to us, I guess. Uh, Celine Dion, though. Don't no. blame Canada. No. So said the Canada guy. That's right. It's, it's the ass hat on the topic. <laughs> so, okay, .edu. All right, so it's in the United States probably, right? Um, probably. Um, so that's good, except I learned how to hack when I was in college. Didn't you guys? Right? I'm not going to download from somebody. I hacked. I probably hacked into that. No, no I'm not going to do that. Uh, ES, Spain. So the only thing, I, I have never been to Spain. I don't know anything about it. But I do know that they have live animals running through the streets. Seems a little backwards to me. So, no. Uh, CZ. Which one is that one? Oh, I got the wrong one. What was the previous one? Switzerland. Oh, wow. See? See, I, I'm not going to do it either way. I, if I don't know where it's from. Indonesia? That's bad, too. Like, I don't know anything about Indonesia. Are we friends? I don't even know. Is, are we a war? I don't know. What's that? Mu- Muslim country? I don't know. Largest. All right. Is that good or bad? Neither. Neither. All right. I, I don't know, so I'm not going to download it. Uh, <laughs> .gov. All right. So I, I'm, I'm tired. Uh, .gov, whatever. Fine. They're going to screw me, but at least I know how I'm getting screwed. <laughs> So I'm going to download it from them. But here's the little problem. It's over HTTP, so that's not particularly secure. So I'm going to have to do something like get a hash. So I start by typing uh, things into Google to try to find hashes. Uh, Google, because you guys all use Google, not because I use Google. Uh, So I type Firefox hash, and nothing on the first page comes back. So I'm like, well, I'm an idiot. I should probably type binary somewhere there. So Firefox binary hash, still nothing there. So... Uh, someone said, your search foo is weak, and, and trust me, it's not that weak. But, you know, if it's not on the first couple of pages, come on, seriously. You know, their SEO sucks. So I go, you know, my buddy's standing there, and I'm like, what, so what would I type in? What, what do you type in? He's like, go to fire, uh, mozilla.org slash Firefox. So we go there. And it redirects from mozilla.org to, uh, slash Firefox to mozilla.org slash product slash Firefox. Then it redirects to firefox.com. Then from Firefox.com, it redirects to Mozilla.com slash Firefox. From there, it redirects to en-usfirefoxpersonal.html with this crazy squid guy on it, uh, which is not particularly useful. Uh, so I scroll down a ways, and there's an update your Firefox, and that is exactly what I'm doing. So I click on that link uh, because I want to find this hash. And it leads me to a page that looks like it might have a hash on it, but there is no hash on it, so that's not particularly useful. So I tried the search box here, you know. Okay, so Google doesn't know where this hash is, but surely Mozilla does. Uh, So I type hash in, and there's two things that come back, both related to the privacy policy. That's not helpful. Uh, So I type on, I click products. Um, Products, you know, all right. Um, So Firefox, sure. Go there. Um, You know, I, you could go in the Windows section, but I, I feel like, um, nerds, you know, use other operating systems, and they're more likely to use hashes, you know, all this crazy stuff. So, um, yeah, I'm going to click on that and see what happens. <clears throat> okay, there's a picture of a, a little penguin, so that's got to be good, right? There's going to be something around here somewhere. Uh, but it turns out there's nothing on that page of use. So I click on security, because hashes are related to security, right? Right? Stands the reason. And then I get some guy on a couch um, saying that they... There's my security is their pro- top priority. Okay, well, that's useful. Uh, so I click on community because surely the community knows where it is. And then I'm taken to this page, um, not particularly useful. Uh, but maybe this development developer center thing has it because developers often use hashes, right? So I go to this page. Um, and it, well, it's a whole other search box. It looks totally different. Let's try something in there. Let's try hash. So there's a whole bunch of things to come back. Uh, frankly, all of them are probably useful to somebody somewhere, but n- certainly not me. Uh, hash tables and user hash and all kinds of stuff inside of Firefox, not particularly useful. So I'll try source code, right? Because so that's what I'm really looking for is the source code of the page. And at the top of page, nothing, but down a ways, there's downloading source archives and blah, blah, blah. So. Great. So I'm probably like one or two clicks away at this point, right? I just need, I need to find the source code. Uh, so down here, download Mozilla source code. All right, I'll do that. And I go down the page, and okay, there's an FTP server. Okay. So at this point, I click on the, 
I click on that thing and it doesn't work. Uh, for some reason, I'm on a network that doesn't allow me to do FTP, which is really lame. I think it was just a security related, related thing. Uh, it was kind of a hostile network anyway, so I was kind of feeling like maybe I probably shouldn't be doing any of this anyway, but uh, you know, with a hash, you know, it, it should be okay. Uh, so it turns out, um, I actually you know, thought maybe my browser was screwed up, but no, in fact, uh, it's not. But I tried from another machine on another network, and in fact, it did work later on. So uh, I'm pretty sure it was just that network. Uh, so I'm, clearly, I'm owned, right? That network's owned. So uh, I type in HTTP instead of FTP, and I magically end up on something that looks like an FTP say, but it's HTTP. So good enough, right? Uh, they're both insecure, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, so click on Firefox because that's what I want to download. And that takes me to a page that uh, has a bunch of nightly releases, Tinderbox. Uh, probably releases, I would guess. I mean, I, I know what it is, but, you know, all right. Uh, but th what's this dm-ftp01.mozilla.org? I'm clearly on ftp.mozilla.org. They're, they're different. I mean, maybe they virtual host on it or something, even though I'm on HTTP and it says it's FTP, but it's really dm-ftp01, so... Uh, whatever. I'm probably hacked at this point, but that's okay. Uh, so um, here we go, right? 3.5.1. That's what I'm looking for, right? Our one click away, right? Uh, so here we go. But wait, what's this down here? What, what, what happened? Now I'm on www.gtlib.gatech.edu. How the hell did I end up there? I'm clearly on... Tech. What's that? Tech. Right. Dave Maynard hacked me, right? Clearly. I'm, I'm screwed. Um, I'm actually on releases.mozilla.org, but it's probably using this crazy DNS thing, so um, I go there from another browser, and now I'm in Nuremberg. Whoa! Whoa! Nuremberg. <laughs> right. Something about trials. Um, so um, I'm probably screwed, but that's okay. Um, so anyway, I click on the link, um, and uh, it takes me to a page that says Firefox 3.5.1 is coming soon. I have it already. What are you talking about? It's coming soon. It's, I have it. Uh, I'm just looking for the damn hash. Uh, it's coming soon, blah, blah, blah. Okay, well, maybe this particular page is just, you know, I don't know. Maybe it's th that mirror didn't update it or whatever. I don't know. So I go back, um, and I'm thinking, well, maybe this 3.5 thing will give me a clue of, of what I should be looking for elsewhere. So I click on 3.5. Aha. Aha, right? MD5, SHA-1. We, we don't trust MD5 anymore because of collisions. Maybe SHA-1. Um, maybe they should use something better I than SHA-1. I just heard this week that MD2 is also bad. Okay. Good. <laughs> Glad we figured that one out. Uh, so, we, um, but wait, what's this key thing? Um, so we, uh, we went to there and, and kind of looked at the, this key um, in case I wanted to email uh, one of the administrators uh, over at Mozilla and say, hey, what the hell? Um, you know, clearly I'm man in the middle, so I don't want to send him plain text because he's going to screw it up on the way back or whatever. Uh, so I want to, you know, send him an encrypted email. Uh, except for it expired. The key for the current version of Firefox has expired already. Uh, so I can't actually email him. Further, uh, there is a, f a mess load of very trustworthy people who have signed it. Um, none of which are actually Mozilla employees, um, but a lot are from Czechoslovakia. Um, so that's not helpful. Is that, wait, is that .ch or .ck? Uh, CZ. Wait, just, just, just so we understand, this talk is about how, how much of a nationalist you are, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm screwed either way. I just want to know who I'm getting screwed by, you know? Buy me a dinner, right? Uh, so, and ultimately, this is, H, this is over HTTP anyway, so I can't trust any of this stuff as it is anyway. Uh, I mean, even though I'm, this is not trustworthy to begin with, I, it's even less trustworthy because it's HTTP. So um, I go onto the FTP site, and, um, and I find out that you actually, you know, the July 18th date doesn't actually match the signature date um, of 716. So um, it was already out of date by the time it was uploaded. So, okay, whatever. We'll deal with that later. Uh, so we're going to click on this SHA-1. Aha, hashes. That looks good, promising. Um, you know, still the wrong version, but that's closer than ever. Maybe we can do directory transversal or whatever, end up in the other directory. So we change 3.5 to 3.5.1, and we should find it. Aha, we're done, right? Right? Way to go, Mozilla, right? We got the hashes, right? Uh, there's one little problem here. Uh, where the hell are we? Uh, so we start doing NS lookups on releases.mozilla.org. We do it against their primary name servers, none of which allow me to do that. Okay, well, maybe I'm just being an idiot. So I do NS lookup against some random server to fi figure out where it is, and it's using round robin DNS. So there's a thousand IP addresses. And by the way, do you think anyone has audited all of those IP addresses? 
Come on, really? You can't break into one of those? You're just not trying. <clears throat> so then I do um, SOA lookup, because maybe I'm just being a total moron. Aha, uh -huh, geo.mozilla.org. So I'll do a lookup against geo.mozilla.org to figure out where this releases.mozilla.org really is. Aha. Uh -huh except that it doesn't work. It doesn't actually allow me to do that type of lookup. And maybe I'm being really stupid, it should be releases.geo.mozilla.org. It also doesn't work. So I have no idea where I am at. And furthermore, I'm over HTTP, which means that all this stuff is useless information as it, it begins with. And I can't, I can't do lookups against them. I mean, I'm doing this against some arbitrary name server somewhere. I mean, I'm, I'm hacked, right? So I, I try to change it to HTTPS, uh, because I figure if I could go from HTTP, I could, you know, maybe from FTP to HTTP, maybe I can go from HTTP to HTTPS, right? And, yeah, you never know, right? Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't work. So I do a wget um, against all of the different IP addresses that come back with that certain DNS request, and none of them support HTTPS. So clearly, clearly I'm hacked, right? I mean, what else are you going to do? So that's kind of just a gigantic fail. Um, so what ended up happening at the end of the day? I just double clicked on the damn exe. Well, Dave is uh, setting up, if, uh, we're following Twitter up here because we're that geeky. Um, you can either address things to any of us directly or you can use the hashtag uh, pound epic fail def con and we will attempt to answer your questions on the fly. And by the way, I want my five bucks. Wait, five bucks for what? <laughs> Hit, I did. <laughs> The Bring it up. Bones connected to the arm bone. <laughs> the arm bones connected to the sex bone. Wait, was that easy? <laughs> that was a waste of money. <laughs> wow. All right, so I am going to talk about like I'm not. I don't have nearly as many slides as our snake does, and I feel bad about it now. I feel very. <laughs> wow. I feel That's very proud. unmanly about that. I feel. I'm not going to say I'm intimidated by the size of our, uh, our snake's deck, but it's one big ass deck. <laughs> Don't be intimidated. I'll use you lube next time. So. <laughs> by the way, did you guys know this is a comedy? You're supposed to be laughing out there, right? I think that's indicative of how funny well, we are. I, I think how that means this? we're supposed to be funny. Yeah, hey, I, I was going to say, <laughs> we'll, we'll start upping our game a little bit. I do not want to shut down my computer now. That would be fail. So I'm going to rant about some things, and I've created a, a thing I like to call fail parrot. And I wrote, uh, I wrote an article for Dark Reading about Iran, because I'm sure as everybody remembers, uh, Iran had a nice democratic election uh, not too long ago. And as everybody recalls, it turned out great. Uh, and then immediately... People started, uh, for some reason, these dissidents started twittering about a stolen election or something. I, I don't know. No, that was in the 50s, wasn't it? The Democratic election. Oh, wait, sorry. Right. Right. Well, look, elections the United States government overthrows are always kosher. I, I just like to say that right now. So uh, I started seeing all this stuff on Twitter, and people started retweeting stuff that was like, uh, in order to help bloggers or whatever in Iran, you should do this stuff to help them. You should change your location on Twitter to Iran. You should change your, uh, your time zone so you look like you're in Tehran. And the theory behind this was that these government cyber goons in Iran that were, would be looking at the network would be so confused over who's actually in Iran versus who's just in New York and pretending to be in Iran to get a girl won't know where you are so they can't come and beat you up. And I, you know, the first time I saw that, like, I thought it was a joke. I'm, I'm going to be honest. I, I was in bed. It was 2 a.m. and my little Twitter thing went off. And because I, I do have epic fail in my life, I answered my, my phone at 2 a.m. And I saw that. And I was like, oh, that's, that's so funny. I'm going to go back to bed now. <laughs> and then I woke up and everybody was retweeting it. And I was like, oh, no, no, this, this is not good. Because I could just see this guy in Iran whose job it is to check down these dissidents who are looking for... <laughs> TCP connections in this country going out to Twitter going, I wonder what all these people are talking about. I mean, there's all the bad guys right here. 
But all these people in New York keep wanting to be in Tehran. I, I don't know what the deal is. And, you know, I, I started telling people this, and they're like, oh, there's no way a country can monitor all internet connections going in and out of their country. And then, you know, immediately after that, the Nokia Siemens deal was made uh, public, and they're like, oh, so that really did nothing but help us feel better about ourselves, while we did actually nothing to help uh, Iran. And what's great is Dave Mortman, uh, if you look at his location right now, he's in, he's in Tehran. So the, the, uh, the epic fell parrot, I, I came up with the idea for that because it st something starts as a dumb idea on something like Twitter, and more people retweet it. And it seems like the more somebody retweets an idea, the more validity it has. So I'm sure somebody could start a meme right now that's like, take off your pants and you don't get charged taxes. <laughs> and if you could get 50 people... <laughs> If you get 50 people to retweet that, you will see Dave Mortman without pants on. If we get 50 people to retweet that, we'll take off our pants. No. I, I'm not... No, I'm, no we wait, won't. Wait, wait, I'm not wearing any underwear. Neither am I. But we expected that. Right. So I thought that was funny. And if you go back and you look at the people that were retweeting, it's like... You know, supposedly industry luminaries like Tim O'Reilly were like, this is how you help the Tehran bloggers get around suppression. And I can just imagine, like, the Iranian secret police beating people up and going, oh, what are these people in America doing? I don't get it. <laughs> Keep beating harder. So, you know, one, one of the things is before you tweet, retweet something, I mean, it might sound like a good idea, but, but check it out first to make sure it actually is actually viable. Which brings me to my next point. The iPhone. Who here has an iPhone? Who here was worried you were about to get owned by an SMS virus worm vulnerability that was going to take over your phone, kill your kids, blow up your house, and while I was at it, give all your money to Obama? <laughs> right? Yeah, there were, there's some people out there like, you know, all that other stuff's fine, but not Obama. <laughs> it's you know, there's one person, I saw them right back there, they're like, we're above 50 it's not funny. Hey, the virus is called Good Times, right? Yeah, <laughs> Good Times. So the first thing uh, I saw is a, it was a fact, and people started retweeting that if you re -jail, if you jailbreak your iPhone and you go in and you set the permissions on this one application called Mobile SMS, you're safe. And, and the problem is, I mean, that sounds great. And like, if you don't know anything about te like the, the, this bug or something like that, you'll be like, well, "All right, I'll do that." So. The problem is, is mobile. The, the way the uh, the iPhone works is uh, there's an application called Com Center that reads the SMS out of the baseband, puts into a database called SMS.db. The mobile SMS will take it out of that database and display it for you. So the bug that they were talking about was actually in Com Center, um, which means that if you stop mobile SMS from running, that's like putting on a condom when you're done. <laughs> it, it doesn't help you at all, right? So then the, uh, the, the second one, and this started being retweeted everywhere, was I, I'm going to call AT&T and have them, disable my, uh, I'm gonna have them disable my SMS plan. And if I can't get SMSs, I'm safe. The problem is, is an SMS plan from someone like AT&T just means that you are now in a computer that will route external messages to your phone. Your phone right now, regardless of what you do or what package you have or anything like that, is constantly receiving SMS messages from AT&T for various things like voicemail, network tuning parameters, you know, various things like that. It's constantly getting SMS messages. And the, uh, the, the, the problem with this attack is they could, in, in theory, spoof uh, the, 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 the service center, which is like uh, the, the master node for where the SMS messages come from. So calling AT&T and disabling your SMS plan, once again, you're slapping that condom on after you find out you have gonorrhea. It, it doesn't help. So the last... The, the last thing, and I, I like my little parrot. Actually, so th this is a true story. This is how uh, Epic Fellow panel this is. I found this picture on iStock Photo at 11 a.m. this morning when I wrote the rest of these great slides, and I'm sure you can tell. So uh, does anybody here have a Verizon MiFi? Right? So there are these little black uh, access points that, you know, you power it up and you'll connect to, uh, you'll connect to it. It will route you out over Verizon super, you know, uh, network and whatnot. So I got mine, and, and I looked at it, and it had an SSID of, like, MiFi 2200 3EC4, right? And then I looked at the password, and I was like, 
oh God, there's got to be some way to take that 3EC4 and turn it into like the password. And that would be great because then if I ever see like the other person in the world that has one, I can totally break into their access point, right? Um, so it turns out there, there isn't a way to do that. So that's somewhat epic fell on my part. I, I, I wasn't smart enough to figure out a way to do that. But while I was calling Verizon Tech Support, they were like, yes, uh, that password's actually the ESN number of your device. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> They're like, yeah, yeah, that's, that's how we keep track of it. If you lose your password, you can call in and we can just tell you what it is. I was like, whoa. So I immediately clicked, uh, hung up, called back and was like, hi, I lost my password. And they're like, really? What, what's, your, uh, uh, what's your phone number? I'm like, well, because it's a Verizon MiFi device, I don't actually know what my phone number is. But I can tell you the ESN number. And they're like, oh, okay. And then they proceeded to tell me everything about myself. I was like, well, that's not good. So then I went and I started collecting more and more MiFi's, and these, these are two, uh, two examples. And uh, so the last four digits are obfuscated, but as you notice, the, first, the, the, the rest of the digits, they look a lot alike for the password, right? So although there's no way to turn that, uh, to take the, uh, the hexadecimal and turn it into the password, there's only four bits of entropy in the password. So, or you know, on some devices, five. It, it, depends on, uh, it depends on what model you get. So it's pretty easy to just guess the password. And you can write a program to do it in less than a minute or so. Which brings me to my clear WiMAX device. And if, 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 uh, if anybody has clear or you know, WiMAX device, I have a little access, because they don't have OSX drivers, which is you know, a giant epic fail. But they don't, uh, they, they'll sell you a little wireless access point you plug your USB card into and it becomes like a wireless access point and it'll route you out much like Verizon Wi-Fi. So I looked, at, uh, I looked at the SSID, and it was myspot-d43. And I was like, ha-ha, this reminds me of the Verizon thing I just failed at, so I'm going to be a little less optimistic. So I then looked at the password, which was 05cd43. And I was like, wait a minute, I've seen that before. And I did an ARP-A. And if you notice the ARP address, the password is the last three octets of the ARP address. <laughs> right? So this was great because I actually showed this to somebody earlier in the week at Black Hat who is a uh, technical consultant for something. He goes, well, that's not the same. You see, the five doesn't have a zero in front of it. <laughs> and I was like, yep, yep, we're safe. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's, that's my epic fail. Uh, and I, didn't, uh, you know, I, I just wanted to do something brief because we, we all fail. Yeah. But, so thank you very much for listening. We're way past 50 on that retweet about pants. Way, way past 50. Wait, what? Way past 50 on the uh, retweet related to pants. How many? Are you, way, Where are we up to? Way. So, so Rich, you su <laughs> Rich, you suggested it. You're first, buddy. <laughs> no! No, wait, where's my beer? I'm making sure it's tucked in. What the hell? <laughs> We all know there's nothing that are tuck in, Rich. Come on. <laughs> Wait, you didn't just violate some license in like the Nevada Gaming Commission or something like that. But that depends on what happens later. Yeah, where's the champagne room? It's under the table. <laughs> Speaker registration. I, I forgot to put it in. So while, uh, while we wait for Mr. Mogul to get ready, why don't we give someone a beer if he can ask Rich the most embarrassing question possible? Who, want, who wants to give this a try? No? No one? <laughs> <laughs> um, so th this is actually a true story. When my, uh, my wife and I first started dating, uh, early on she established a couple of rules. Um, uh, the first two I will never reveal. Um, and the last was that I am not allowed to get naked in public when she is still present. So 
Uh, I'm allowed to if she's not around, but if she's actually in the room, then no. It... I've been trying my damnedest, but <laughs> three years in, and there's anyway. But he's still not over five seven, so yeah. Hey, Jack, just seriously. That's a beer. You know what? Wait, just give I, him I'm a not sure pack. how many people in the room have seen that picture, but uh, there, there is one that exists out there on the Internet, and, uh, yeah, I think Dave might have it. All right, so on to my little section here. I'm calling My Favorite Fails. This is a random collection of... <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Jack, do you, do you know what Rufinol tastes like? <laughs> no? Uh, eat up, then. Uh, and this is brought to us by Evil Squirrel Enterprises World Nomination Specialist. So the first thing I'm going to talk about, I'm actually not going to talk about technology to start with. This is still definitely security-related, but before I got into IT security, I did physical security. So I was the security director at the University of Colorado for special events. So I ran all the football games, basketball games, and concerts. Uh, and then I also did some work in Denver and a few other places. So probably the first fail is having a 21-year-old kid who weighed 138 pounds running security for some of the biggest bands in the business in the 90s. Uh, and in 1991, I think it was 91, we were working the dead. And so this was um, out in Denver, and this was like this totally – the dead – like I liked the dead until I went to a dead show because deadheads suck. They like – oh, my fucking God, do they suck. <laughs> Like, you have all these people who are, like, you meet them and they, you think, like, I went to college in Boulder and they're all like, oh, free love and the world should be all nice to everybody else. And then they show up at a concert and they're raging assholes. They're like, they're like spinning around and dancing. You're like, no, you're, you're knocking in other people. Fuck you, man. You can't tell me what to do. Go to hell. You can't piss on my rights. But you pissed on that kid. I mean, it's like... Anyway, uh, I'm, I'll, I'll calm down. So we're working the dead show, and the failure isn't the deadheads. I mean, beyond the, what, what's happened to them later in life as they've lost their idol. But we're walking around, and I'm, my job at this, it was in Denver where I didn't run everything, but I was still a supervisor. So I'm supervising half of the house, which means uh, my buddy had, like, one half of the crowd. I had the other half of the crowd. We probably had, like, 100, 150 people working for us you know, making, getting people to their seats and stuff, and reports start coming in, people with tickets for the same seats. I'm like, oh, shit. I mean, this is like Ticketmaster days when, you know, they were printing the tickets up. It wasn't the barcodes or anything else. So we go in, and I start looking at the tickets. I'm trying to figure out what's going on. It was really weird. So it was like there were 20 seats, and like 2,000 people had tickets for the same 20 seats. Um, and then we figure out that, okay, well, clearly somebody has been counterfeiting tickets um, out in the parking lot. So the fail was not on our part. So we figured it out. So we're walking up, and people would nicely come up and go, yeah, we, we both have tickets for the same seat. And I'm like, oh, can I see your tickets? I'm like, oh, there must be a mistake. We're going to take you down to the floor, and we're going to take care of this. And so we had this section on the floor, which became the corral. We had, like, the barricades and stuff around it. And we were, like, funneling them down there, like, tens, twenties, hundreds at a time. until. And then they were all waiting, and they thought, hey, maybe I'll get floor seats, and I'll get to go backstage. And we walked them backstage, and they got totally psyched, and we kicked them out the back door because they bought counterfeit tickets in the parking lot. And the reason we knew this was Ticketmaster, and again, pre-barcode days, they used different card stock. And this was one of Ticketmaster's tricks to find counterfeit tickets. So it was either different fonts or different card stocks were used for different events. For this one, it was heat sensitive. So we'd take lighters and we'd hold it under the ticket. And if it turned black, it was counterfeit. And if it burned like brownish, kind of like regular paper, we knew it was real. So, the, you know, so wait, let me get this straight. Your, your authentication method was to destroy their credentials. <laughs> <laughs> with a lighter. Problem solved. <laughs> so, Rich, can I see your license, please? <laughs> uh, no. Wait, they're, they're in his pants. I don't know if he put them back on yet. <laughs> so, uh, Second thought. the best part of this, the fail wasn't all of that. It was the fact that we kicked out 2,000 really pissed, selfish deadheads, and the idiot was still trying to sell the counterfeit tickets out of the back of his truck in his parking lot. <laughs> On to the next one. <laughs> hey, Rich, man, you're harshing my mellow. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, it was like, uh, anyway, sorry. If I offended any 
deadheads in here, I don't care. Um, <laughs> so this was about 2005. There's this event in Boulder, Colorado called the Kinetic Sculpture Challenge. And anybody from San Diego, they got one there. They do the same kind of thing. It's dead now. They don't do it anymore. Um, I was the security director there for a while. I, I spent 10 years working that thing. And so obviously I knew everything about how that worked. Well, the next year, we decided to form our own team and see what we could get away with. Well, that went really well, and then the year after that, the police decided to clamp down on the alcohol because, you know, the hippies were finally in charge of things in Boulder, and that's what happens. Um, and so you weren't supposed to bring your alcohol in. You had to buy it there. And so this is just a picture of the Boulder Reservoir where they have it. You can see that it's a pretty large piece of property. This whole big race goes on. And it's one of those things where people build and decorate these craft, and it has to go over water and over land, and there's a band there, like Bare Naked Ladies and all these you know, bands you would know about, Los Lobos, not the hugest Stop ones. Stop blaming Canada. <laughs> Blame Canada. So All that hockey hubba-boo-boo. This was kind of cool. This was our time to test out everything we learned about security and see if we could do a penetration test on the event that we ran for all these years. Uh, and so our only goal was to get alcohol in. So the year before, we buried our kegs in the sand. They figured that one out. Um, okay, so they, they got the kegs buried in the sand. We did that. We, we brought the kegs in and just buried them there mostly to keep them cool. And we put a lawn chair over it. So we just sit in the lawn chair and do our thing. Um, and they, they're like digging out the keg, and they're making a big deal about it, the new security company that got hired after I left. Meanwhile, there are two kegs stacked under a blanket right next to the hole they're digging, and they left them. <laughs> they never freaking saw And a friend of mine who's a cop came over. I mean, obviously, I did this physical security, and she just looks, and she starts laughing and walks away. <laughs> and so the Wait, race starts with our kegs in. Yeah. <laughs> this was one of the events where that rule came from. So, well, the stripper flashed me, and I had to... Return the favor. <laughs> anyway, I guess it wasn't much of a favor. So, <laughs> so we knew ahead of time we were going to have these problems. So we're coming up with ideas. And so one of the ideas I had is we'd sneak in a week ahead of time. We'd take our kegs. We'd use scuba gear. We'd sink them down in the lake. And then we would actually tie ropes to them on the buoys that were about one or two feet below the surface, do the GPS coordinates. We'd take our raft out. We'd put on our scuba gear, dive over the edge, pull up our kegs. This seems entirely too much work to get beer. <laughs> Wait, wait, it's wait, wait. all about the fun. Wait, wait. How much were they selling the beer for? Like Vegas prices. Oh, well, that explains it. Yeah. So a dollar and a blowjob? <laughs> so um, so we're, we're figuring that out, and I like, figured out where to get tanks and who is scuba certified, but one of the guys had like a heart problem, and I was stuck. Anyway, so we came up with another idea, which was to sneak in. And wait, 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 wait. You were doing something illegal, and you had to wait to find somebody who was scuba certified? <laughs> What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, shit. It's kind of like going, we're going to go in here and kill everybody, but first we've got to get the car out of the handicap slot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what we ended up doing was uh, my buddy Scott and Will, who I lived with at the time, Will is another speaker goon. We're going to try and get him in here a little bit later. Or Scott is, but uh, he's out doing something else. So they went out the night before, and we took Coke bottles and Mountain Dew bottles. And we emptied the Mountain Dew bottles completely and the Coke bottles halfway. Coke bottles became rum and Cokes. The Mountain Dews we filled with margarita mix. It was the little, like, you know, the regular little bottles, like this um, drinking up here. So like that. So we filled a bunch of those up. We put them in a mesh bag snuck out there, and they, like, they were getting tracked by the guys who were doing security in the evening, but the area wasn't closed. And so they managed, one of them distracted by digging holes in the sand. And then the other one sunk the bottles underneath the dock, so into the water. And so the race starts, and me and my other buddy, well, first of all, the next morning, one of my, my friend who was the cop comes up, and she's like, you're going to love this. Because literally, they're walking around digging up our fake holes. <laughs> and they're figure, looking for scuba tanks. Because we, we let that rumor split. Uh, so the race starts. We run out. And there's all these people standing on the dock. So it sunk. And so my buddy and I are like, get off the dock. Get off the dock. Get off the We're screaming. All these people are freaking out. They all run off the dock. And we lift it up. And we pull out our booze and go out on the lake. And that was our, uh, I wouldn't say that was a failure. That was a success on our part. But it was kind of funny. So talked about it anyway. Let's talk about technology. I know. That, it, total fucking non sequitur. <laughs> 
Let's talk about technology. So I've had a couple of very recent failures. By the um, way, we don't audit this stuff at all. We have no idea what each other are going to talk about. So this <laughs> crap ends up in the speech and, <laughs> and bread and whatever. So um, I've had a bunch of failures lately. Uh, you may have noticed Kaminsky got hacked. Some communications of mine with him got nailed. I didn't get hacked, but as part of that. Um, and the other one that was kind of bugging Wait, me. So are, are you admitting that you did the hacking? Because you yeah. did get hacked? <laughs> yeah, I, I'm Andy Sec. There you go. So <laughs> I'm a fucking ex Gartner analyst. What are the odds of that? <laughs> very low. <Yeah. laughs> I was going to say very high. <laughs> so July 20th, I wrote an article for Tidbits. I write articles for some Mac stuff. Um, and it was, I was trying to, you know, I'd been kind of knocking Apple a lot on security. And I was kind of excited about the iPhone 3GS that had the hardware encryption on it. I'm like, well, this is pretty cool. You have hardware encryption, you've got remote wipe, you've got pin codes, and you've got pin code wipe. So if you do your pin code, 10 times, you don't get it in right, it'll wipe the iPhone. That's great. I mean, that's pretty close to what BlackBerry has, full enterprise class device. Uh, so I was pretty excited. You know, I wrote it. And again, because it's not often I get to write positive uh, security articles about Apple, even though I like Apple a lot and Apple, or Apple stuff. So July 23rd, unfortunately, somebody does this. Um, hacker says iPhone 3GS encryption is useless. And what it turns out is, yeah, um, it works fine until you jailbreak the iPhone, and then you install SSH, and you can pull every piece of data off, and it just unencrypts it through the hardware on the way out. So I, I'm looking like an ass, which happens. Well, it's user-friendly, Rich. It's, it's user-friendly. They, they don't want attackers to have to work. Dude, this is, so this is like the original EFS fault. Does anybody know what, what Microsoft EFS, when they first came out with that? So the deal is, is you set up for file folder encryption, and you link, because nobody wants to have to like manually type in a 128-bit key. So what they do is they link the encryption to the logon credentials. And that's fine, except you can do stuff like um, on, on Microsoft where you can take the SAM where you can go in and you can actually directly hack the registry through a Linux boot disk and you can wipe out the password. And so the first versions of EFS, what you could do is you could wipe out the password and then all you had to do was log in with no password and you'd have access to all the data because it was encrypted but it was tied to who was logged in. So that was fixed by what you do is you set it so that the, um, the encryption key, the credentials for that, are separate from the login credentials. So it's, they're synchronized. It's the exact same thing, but it's only synchronized if you actually change the password through the legitimate mechanism of the operating system. If you directly hack the registry because those are in different places, then you're not going to be able to get the right key applied to the encrypted file, and you won't gain access to it. And so that's how you solve that particular problem. But Apple didn't freaking do that. So what they did is it, it's clear. Now, I'm just assuming because I haven't done the look. But when you enter your PIN code, that logs you into the device, and that gives you unencrypted access. If that PIN code is changed or removed outside the normal mechanisms, you still get access to all of the data on the device. And I think that's how this hack worked. So I, I like to test these things before I write about them. Yeah, I'm like some you know fluffy analyst dude who doesn't know what he's doing. But I want to make sure this stuff works before I write a retraction of my article. So I start testing it, and I get some interesting results. Um, I find an O-Day in the iPhone. And it's another really minor issue, and I'm going to feel like shit because I'm not going to talk about it because I don't dis I reported it and didn't disclose it. But let's just say it's even dumber than the encryption thing. And I'm not trying to knock Apple again because it's it, it's just a... I don't know. I, Partial no, disclosure no, Rich, fail. Yeah. Rich, Rich, it's okay to knock Apple, really. <laughs> Rich won't knock Apple, but I will. Hey, so Rich, anyway... You have the other shirt you made? There are other issues related to the encryption of the iPhone and related to passcodes that are very easy to figure out. Uh, unfortunately, I did it totally by accident while trying to test this other thing. So that's reported, and I wasn't the first one to report it. Hopefully, it's getting fixed. But none of this is like my ultimate fail this year. So last year at DEF CON 16, I did this kind of like heavier project, which was uh, I tried to build the ultimate evil twin. And most, um, it, like I hope everybody here knows what the evil twin attack is. But that's There'll basically- be two gnomes? What? There'll be two gnomes? <laughs> Remember Mini Mogul. <laughs> I'm told that Mini Mogul will get very big. <laughs> you missed, actually, you missed that last year. So, the evil twin attack, you make your own access point. It's kind of what Carmetasploit does some of this. You overpower the local access point. You go to Starbucks, you boost more power than they do. You de auth everybody, you bring them onto your access point. You man in the middle of them, you do whatever. And so, I tried to kind of like take it up a little bit to the next level. So, I hacked the wireless router. Uh, I put high-gain antennas on it, a 500-milliwatt booster on it. 
uh, set it up so that I could disguise it, drop it, leave it, battery operated. I'll show you pictures in a minute. And then multiple, multiple exploits. So when you connect it to this thing, it tried to exploit you three or four different ways. Because basically you would connect, and I used something called No Dog Splash, so you would get a connection screen that popped up. And in that, I had like two or three different browser-based exploits. So instantly by connecting this thing, bam, you get nailed with these two or three. Uh, when I did the demo last year, I did it with Core Impact. You can do that with Metasploit as well. The next thing is, is you can do sniffing. Uh, I'll go in the details of how I did that. And then H, um, you can do HTML injection, which is some other stuff I did. So I had the, the splash page with the exploits. And I think I did both Metasploit and Core. I can't remember. Then you have a redirection temporary page. And what happened was, and our snake helped me with this, um, we had it so that it would flash a bunch of pages behind that you don't see, and I, or it was actually iframes that we use, and it would just randomly connect to Google and Yahoo and a few other things. And if you had ever logged into those, we're doing cross-site request forgery and just sniffing all of those credentials, um, sniffing the information. We got addresses and, and some other stuff out of it. This was called rich jacking. Yeah. <laughs> rich jacking. You got to have like rich jacking or fritching. <laughs> Felching? Never mind. So... <laughs> and keep in mind, all of this is different than jacking rich, which is, whoa. <laughs> and now we know what happened to our snake's other shoulder. <laughs> How the fuck did I get on this panel? I wish it were that simple. Yeah. So then I had TCP dump collecting everything. Every 30 minutes, it would FTP it to my server at home. Here's what it looked like. I used a WRTSL, SL, fail, DL, SL. Uh, with a cradle point router, you can actually plug the EVDO, you can do the EVDO direct off of that, but the cradle point was like the same size practically as the USB hub and was a little bit more reliable. And then a uh, 500 milliwatt amp. And you'll notice it kind of looks in a, in a weird thing because, um, and I had a separate thing for all the power on it. There's the battery to make it battery operated, fit in the backpack, how I kind of connected all that stuff in. And I hid it in some fake books. So, and you can tell he had in books because Rich can't read. Yeah. <laughs> so this is it. You'd walk in, you'd see this, maybe with a lamp on top. And I actually had it so you could put a lamp on top, round the lamp cord inside, plug it in, and round the cord out the bottom so it looked like it was part of the lamp. Uh, and then you could just leave this in an airport um, lounge or something else um, and just enjoy. So I had an idea of what to do this year. That was all my last year stuff. I had a really, really good idea, minus the dope. I was going to do, oops, a robotic evil twin. So I'm like, hey, why don't I take this thing, I turn it into a robot, and I can just drop it over a fence, and it'll drive up somebody's off, under somebody's office. It'll overpower their local Wi-Fi, and connect them into my stuff, and then I own them. Um, and so I was thinking this in my head. What is that? Kind of totally had it all planned out. I thought, well, you know, if that doesn't work, maybe it'll you know, be more like this. <laughs> That's a Roomba. Uh, and really, it looks like this. <laughs> Squirrel. Hey, I'd like to introduce you to the CIA's next Q, everybody. <laughs> he designs d gadgets, so you don't have to. So this is the robotic evil twin. So what we've got is um, everything I had last year a little bit different. So I added a compass and sound sensor. So the compass sensor was doing the navigation. Uh, this is all inertial nav based on compass. Dave was actually helping me, or, or uh, Maynard, we were trying to figure out how to do GPS via the iPhone. Um, you'd have the iPhone do the GPS, and we could send Bluetooth commands in remotely. Kind of almost got it done, but that failed. Uh, then it has the jailbroken iPhone, which connect to that wireless access point, because that's got Metasploit on it. It's got the dev of Metasploit on it, so cool. Now I, I don't even need to worry about getting, I've got Metasploit on there, I don't have to do that remotely. There's the hack work from last year, the battery in there, the EVDO, and then the LEGO NXT and the wireless booster and everything else. So there were some failures along the way. The first failure was I assumed I needed a powered steerable front differential made out of Legos. Well, of course you did. I mean, we all did. I mean, it's, it's only natural. Uh, and it looked really cool, and I spent two or three days building it. And I learned something about differentials. The, the deal with the differential is when you make a turn in like a four-wheel drive vehicle... It, because there's different turn radiuses of the wheels, it powers one differently than it powers the other, and that's how you get the turn. Well, the problem is when you build it out of fucking Legos and you put a lot of weight on it, all it does is not turn. <laughs> so my wife's getting pissed off. We got a new baby. I'm spending my nights playing with Legos in front of the TV, <laughs> and none of it's working. So 
Then there were other fails. So I tried to get these high torque motors, Lego power function. I, I got obsessed with this Lego thing. And so you get these high torque Lego power function motors. The problem is, is you can't control the rotations on them. So there was no way to navigate the distance accurately. Then I couldn't get the compass to lock on the heading because it would always like, you know, it was turning too fast. And this is a Lego. It's not a fucking Pentium or even. So it's slow and that didn't work. And then I had steering. I don't have really an engineering background. I have a history degree. And... I don't know how to build a steering mechanism. And I'm looking at my car, you know, my Ford Explorer, and I'm looking at my Legos. <laughs> so they were the same, right? No, the Legos were more maneuverable. <laughs> yeah, it, so that wasn't working real well. And then finally, my little Lego brains died. So the screen on it died, not even of you know, warranty, which, of course, will arrive next week. And then I bricked the router when I was trying to install Metasploit on it. So, so wait, everything... basically, the, the wrap-up of this story is you didn't do anything right. No. <laughs> Nothing. So here's what does kind of work. You can actually see it here. It does move even with the score. Oh, I forgot I put a, a camera on the front of it. Uh, that's one of those streaming webcams. Uh, that part actually did work fine. Um, so it can drive around. I wanted to prove that I actually made this thing drive. Here it is navigating in front of my house. That's when the batteries died. <laughs> Wow, it looks like it does Are straight. <laughs> <laughs> go, go, speed racer. That go. Looks, that looks like it does straight lines really well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a Dodge Viper of Lego robot cars. <laughs> it, it, it does turn just like shit. Um, <laughs> stealthy. And that, and that was the stealth driven by inertia. What are you talking about? So, <laughs> you guys ever see, like, the video in Iraq, and they've got the pack bot, and they, like, throw it over a fence in the middle of Mosul, and the thing, like, flips over, and it, like, drives in, and that was in my head, and it was gonna happen. So do we get to see you throw this thing? <laughs> Let's clear off the table. Oh. Clear back. I need to run. This doesn't have a recipe for disaster, does it? <laughs> <laughs> the Good squirrel call. is going to so, die. Um, this is going to impress no one. <laughs> Not one of you. Wait, wait. I need to get this out of my system. Wait, so, just so, so again, I still love you. You're, you're taking your pants off again then after this impresses no one? <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> you ever watch a movie and you... Like, the first five minutes, you know how it's going to end. <laughs> it's like a two-hour movie, but you kind of like the director, so you stick with it because you're curious to see how he gets there. That's kind of where we are right now. Sorry, Baker. <laughs> it seems to have passed away. I harbor no illusions at how uncool that is, and I don't <laughs> fucking care. I'm at DEF CON, and I brought a robot! Wait, I'm watch done. this. <laughs> Wingardum Leviosa. <laughs> hey, it worked about just as well, didn't it? It's got a delay on it. <laughs> oh, it has a delay. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Whoa, not my beer. Not my beer. <laughs> Quick, put it out. It was going to commit suicide, but then it didn't. <laughs> we love you, Beaker. We miss you, Squirrel. Okay, um, so while well, well, Larry's setting up, uh, Beaker uh, sent me some email from Boston. He sent some poetry for us. Go ahead. Yeah. Be afraid. Be very afraid. Okay. 
<clears throat> Apparently, Mortman feels quite virile while wearing, he's wearing a pink girl shirt, shirt while dissing the squirrel. <laughs> Arsenic, it seems, is up to old tricks, fucking up websites with bad JavaScripts. Martin McKay at last found his place, providing strange liquids for the hole in Larry's face. <laughs> and then there's the mogul. Did he leave his robot at home, too heavy to carry for such a small gnome? <laughs> that leaves, but just one more, and we can't forget him, don't know if he showed up, the chances are slim, after last year's failed panel with pictures of a goat, tales of pen tests, and the dragons he smote. Hey, Maynard, how's it going? You feeling okay? Got anything worthy to impress us today? Sorry I can't be there, miss my friends, and the panel will show up next year, same deaf time, same deaf channel. Chris. You know, right now, he's in his underwear doing push-ups or something, right? <laughs> That's the mental image I don't want. It's too late. <laughs> it's in there. It's rattling around. <laughs> All right. You can't... Beware of the flying bread. You, you cannot poke out your mind's eye. And I've said it before, and I'll say it again. There are things on the internet that cannot be unseen. <laughs> Sometimes you wish you could. Wait, where'd Mogul go? <laughs> Where, it, Mogul probably had to pee. He's got a bladder so the size what, of a thimble. Yeah, while, while he's gone, ev when he comes back, everybody should make fun of him for having the smallest bladder a man can possibly have. This is the second time he's gone to pee, and this is my fourth beer. <laughs> have you seen me leave? I didn't think so. We should this isn't the epic win panel. We should have the uh, the porta potty on stage next porta potty time. Porta on stage. <laughs> so just get him one of those little chemical bags. Ooh. Sneaky leaker. Sneaky. Le <laughs> so so let me say um, while we retweeted the no pants for taxes, um, well I'll already say I took off my pants, and if you really want to see it, I'm not going to do it now. Because I wasn't lying when I said I wasn't wearing any underwear. <laughs> um, yeah. Let me just say two words. Horse cock. Um, <laughs> so go to paul.com.com forward slash onos with an e dot jp uh, onosword dot jpg. That's all Wait, the proof your you jpg has the same password as Dan Kaminsky's root password? <laughs> What, what kind of fucked up relationship is that? The man's sexy. What can I say? All right, so, so let's talk about fail. So my good friend and co-host at Paul.com Security Weekly, uh, Mick Douglas and I, uh, worked on a little project together on uh, owning identities with peer-to-peer uh, -peer file sharing networks. And we uh, affectionately called this uh, presentation Peer-to-Peer -peer Information Disclosure or Identity Theft via Peer-to-Peer -peer Networks is as easy as clubbing baby seals. <laughs> yes. Yes, it is. Now, for full disclosure, have you actually clubbed a baby seal? No, no. This is much easier and much cleaner. Stop but he has taken baby seals clubbing. Stop blaming Canada. <laughs> Stop blaming Canada. <laughs> All right. So what did we do? We were talking about doing some uh, preliminary research for doing some pen tests. How can we leverage peer-to-peer -peer file sharing networks uh, to gain information for recon for doing pen tests and, and all that good stuff? So really, was there anything good still out there? I mean, are these boobs really still sharing stuff on peer-to-peer -peer networks? Um, how is our, as an industry, how is our education working to the unwashed masses? I mean, how stupid or educated are people that are using peer-to-peer -peer file sharing networks? I mean, do I really need to ask that question? Yeah. So, yeah, this is Wait a minute. I, I have to interrupt everybody. I'd like to point out that Rich Mogul is now back. Oh, uh, yeah. I had to pee again. See? <laughs> told you. He just had a baby. <laughs> Cut him some slack. All right. So why is this club like clubbing baby seals? It's easy. You only need a little bit of patience and, well, maybe some warm wear in the club. You get quick results. Yeah. And, well, it's legally yet morally and ethically dubious. Right? Yeah, Come on, man. That's a cute damn seal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it gets better. Really. It does. Oh. Oh. 
Yeah. yeah. I can, uh, and I thought this was supposed to be humor, right? Uh, oh, wait. I'm harshing everyone's buzz and, you know, yeah, no, sorry. You're mellow. Oh, you're, right. you're harshing my mellow, oh, man. Right. Sorry, I've been drinking. So we took some inf- inspiration from the old uh, see what you share dot com uh, project, which is no longer available. So you got to go grab it through uh, archive dot org. And uh, we we sort of had some prompting from the the recent uh, strike fighter uh, information release via peer to peer networks. Well, at least that's what they told us in the media. What happened that it was released via peer to peer networks? Yeah, believe what you will. But so we took that as peer to peer networks. Great. So let's go look at it. And even just this past Wednesday. Uh, Brian Krebs at the Washington Post uh, posted an article uh, talking about information that was acquired via via peer-to-peer file sharing networks, which included uh, missile silo information in the entire United States and well as a couple of other foreign countries, and uh, plans for Michelle Obama's uh, safe house. That might be some pretty valuable information that some folks might like, and well, on peer-to-peer file sharing networks, not good. So Mick and I started searching peer-to-peer file sharing networks. What do we use? Well, we're both Mac users, so we use Nutella uh, OS X clients. Uh, we tried Acquisition and Poisoned. I liked Acquisitions better. Well, it was a couple bucks, and it was worth it just to see the epic fail that ensues. Um, we're looking to, at some point, uh, complement this with some command line tools. Uh, Mutella works pretty well, and we're going to script some of this stuff, and we'll see why. So we started searching peer-to-peer file sharing networks using clients. And, well, we spent maybe an afternoon. So give you an idea of time frame. Four hours, we, you know, we get home and, well, now we search a little bit at night. Now we're here, you know, sit on the couch, have a beer or 12. I'd like to point out another coincidence that four hours, how long Viagra recommends that if you have an erection, you should call a doctor. <laughs> oh. Yeah, we'll get there, too. So we thought up a bunch of, quote, evil and common sense file names. What would we like to search for on peer-to-peer file sharing networks? What would be interesting to us? Uh, we talked about, we thought about some specific document extensions and various combinations of the above. We, you know, searched for all of the Word documents on peer-to-peer file sharing networks. You think we got a couple of results? Yeah, it was something like 30,000 results or more for just Word docs. So, yeah, we can download those and start looking for the contents of those. But let's target a little more. And we can use some creativity here. So here's some of the stuff that we actually (laughs) used. Just a few. So terms, word, doctor, health, password, lease, license, uh, passport, and visa. Hmm. Bunch of file names. Wait, so what what about the pornographic ones you search for? Because I know you search for cock and... (laughs) that, That was a separate study. (laughs) <laughs> was Stuff it, was in it, Dave's house. Was it, was, yeah. it, was it a growing study? It, most certainly. Two words. Horsecock. <laughs> we searched for a bunch of extensions. Uh, you name it. We, we thought of a bunch of evil stuff. So we had some issues. <laughs> so when you run the search, it searches the entire peer-to-peer sharing network at the time you run it. <laughs> Poor kid. (laughs) And now we have the laughter. So we were constantly having to rerun the search, hence why we want to do some command line stuff that we can script and and do it at at different times. You know, there are multiple peer-to-peer file sharing networks. We only focused on one because, well, we had only had a couple hours to do this, and it was just sort of a, you know, a fun thing to do. Uh, There's the certainly transitional nature of peer-to-peer file sharing networks. So what happens when little Johnny gets home from school? He turns on his computer and he surfs the web for some porn for a couple of hours while his peer-to-peer file sharing is is working. And then mommy calls him to dinner. So he shuts his computer off and now his files aren't shared anymore. So depending on the time of day, um, we were getting different results and seeing more people active on those file sharing networks. So we need to have the ability to run these searches at multiple uh, times a day. And if you think about geographically, that people in other countries other than the U.S., where we were located when we were doing these, are going to be searching and having their uh, peer-to-peer file sharing network clients up at different times of the day. So I'm not going to get up at 3 o'clock in the morning to go do this because, well, I like to sleep. So... 
what's next for us. Some automated and repetitive searching, uh, better criteria for file names, <laughs> and maybe we want li to limit this to some specific IP addresses. Um, and by about now, you'll probably see that I have an unhealthy obsession with lolcats. <laughs> it only gets worse. Okay. So the next generation of peer-to-peer -peer file sharing, we feel, Mick and I both feel, that uh, this is only going to get worse. Because, well, we're driving our networks underground, and when we start driving them underground, it becomes that whole leetness. Well, you want to participate? So let's encrypt your traffic. Well, that's great. I'm not sniffing it. I'm actually participating, <laughs> so I have all the encryption that I need. But... When we start going underground, well, we don't want folks to start leeching from our peer-to-peer -peer file sharing network, so we're going to make you share more so we can download more. The more you share, the more you can download. So what's the easiest way for me to share more information? Yeah, set my Nutella client to share the entire root of my drive. Sweet. I like this. So you guys are probably saying, well, Larry, that's great and fine and all, but you know, show me the money. So let's talk Wait, about what we found. You don't have a money shot in here, do you? <laughs> do you want one? No. <laughs> no, I'm still reeling over that. You know what? Here, here's a, here's a, <laughs> I'm going to take another one. <laughs> no money. Man, I don't even have to take my pants off to get money. I feel good now. <laughs> All right. So let, let, let's, see some re <laughs> let's see some results aside from the music, movies, and TV shows and porn. Lots and lots of porn. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, isn't that recursion, pussy looking at pussy? <laughs> or, or even better, as I heard from the audience, is that kitty porn? Oh. Yes. You know, it's, whoever said that deserves a beer. Come and get a beer. <laughs> All right, so no more kitty porn. So what did we find? Yeah, malware. Go figure. Yeah, so every search term we looked for, so we, we searched for password.txt. Yeah, and we got research, uh, search results back. Password.txt live at the Orpheum. Really? <laughs> so we downloaded it and it had a setup.exe. And, well, yeah, the first bunch of hits seemed to be malware. So we ran it through VirusTotal. And, uh, well, 35 out of 36 antivirus things found it. Guess what antivirus you do not use? Dr. Webb, because it's the only one that didn't find any of this stuff. So, wait, does that mean you're endorsing Norton antivirus? They have a gamer edition now, you know. Really? <laughs> I thought that was pretty I'm not even going to comment. No. All right, so without any further ado, let's work our way up from, from a really gentle fail to a totally epic fail. And while it's humorous in its own right, it's also really sad. So we found a whole bunch of miscellaneous goodies. This was one of Mick's favorites. It's a scan of someone's exam. And at the very bottom, you see where the text is sort of going sideways, and they're getting really frustrated with the answers because they don't know shit. Okay, we also found some other miscellaneous goodies. How about a doctor's note? saying that uh, this particular individual wasn't able to work from these dates. And an employee review. Uh, they did all right. The interesting thing is that the name is blank, so what do you think? They photocopied it and just did it for everyone in the department? <laughs> so not just for the boss. No, no, no. So how about this one, the 2008 Cheerleading World's event schedule? Hmm. Wait a minute. Did you find the 2009? <laughs> <laughs> But even better, they have all the names for all the judges with all of their travel info and emergency cell phone contacts. Thank God. <laughs> we can finally take down the cheerleading industry. <laughs> and by take down, you mean... Never mind. <laughs> Keep in mind, we're only on the miscellaneous goodies here. How about someone's rental application, including their name, address, social security number... Uh, um, monthly salary, uh, check numbers and routing numbers, signatures. It gets worse. How about a last will and testament? <laughs> well, you know what? To be honest, they don't really need it. <laughs> yeah. Now, this particular will and testament is really sad because the only thing her kids are getting is like a box of photos and a sewing machine. 
And floppy disks. <laughs> no Viagra here. Uh, retirement planning. I really feel sorry for this particular couple because they need something like $877 a month to retire by the time they're 71. That's a lot of... I don't know about you guys, but I think that's a lot of money to be putting away in my retirement fund every month. $877. You know, if they want to retire by like 61 and have a decent amount of pay, they need to save something like $8,000 a month. I don't know about you, but I don't make $8,000 a month. You know what? Roulette. Roulette. That might be a better gamble. Look, every really. movie I see, at the end, they put the money down on black, and it works. Done. So, speaking of clubbing baby seals, that was pretty easy, right? <laughs> I know, I know. We do not wait, audit wait. this. He's, he's just sleeping, right? <laughs> sleeping, right. That's what I'm going to tell my two-year-old, sleeping. So it gets better. How about taxpayer identification numbers? Yeah, we found those two. And not just one, but two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. I like to play this game, thanks. Were these all from the same site? <laughs> yeah, the, these were actually all pulled from the same machine, and it gets better. You want to talk about fail? $392,323 earned by this family last year. Social security numbers of the filers and their children, names, addresses. It gets better. How about the account and routing number where their refund was deposited? Someone in Troy, Michigan made $300,000. <laughs> Someone in Troy, Michigan made $300,000? I think this is fake. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll take that. Here's another one. And another one. 109,000 yeah, kids. That, that's more realistic for Troy, Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> so this one was uh, Modesto, California. they got to be poor. I don't even think that's a real place. 109,000 in Modesto? Yeah. How about another one? Ludington, uh, Michigan. Uh, they get a refund of $741 with their routing Wait, account. Who is Mr. Tooman? What's that? Mr. Tooman. You tell me. Okay, ten thousand dollar tax return. I'm just you probably should have blurred that out. Sweet. Oh, security, social security numbers, uh, one hundred and three thousand dollars. An effective tax rate of twelve percent. That's not right. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting better. Now, you think I might want one or two of these? Yeah, I only found one, but that's okay. All I need is one. Not two. Not four. Not six. Yeah, six. <laughs> Anyone even want to be an Oriental family coming to the U.S.? Seriously. I've always wanted to be an Oriental family. <laughs> you too can be an entire Oriental family. <laughs> Fake ID, anyone? Sure. Here's four. Oh. Wait, and so you're saying you just found all this stuff on P2P? Yeah, in about four hours. So you notice that one of these licenses doesn't have a name blurred out because it was too precious not to? Dude's middle name is Raunchy. <laughs> Yeah. I did. That's this is just on one network. One Look on at that hair. Network. Tell me you wouldn't do her. Come on. I mean that that's beside the point. Right, is it, is this better? The hair. Is this better? Come on. Anybody want to go to Hawaii? I personally love this one. Is that is that a, that's a silver sword, right? That's a lead pipe. <laughs> Photoshop to the rescue. So what you're saying is you lay pipe a lot. I lay pipe a lot. Yes, I don't like pipe. Okay. Yeah. So you remember that family of six? Uh-oh. Yeah. <laughs> you know this one was kind of lame, but still. 
Why? How about a couple more? Because he had a mohawk in his <laughs> passport picture. That's a faux hawk. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I got to tell you, this next one is actually kind of really lame. Because, yeah, we got Paris Hilton's passport. But it came from parisexposed.com and it was in someone's peer-to-peer file sharing directory. I really don't know why we felt the need to actually uh, redact her information. But we did anyways. I mean, because Lord only knows that she doesn't do a lot of red acting herself. Right? <laughs> so here's where it gets Who really... Who is that old man? So here's where it gets really scary. We have the sad tale of Mr. N. And uh, that's the best we're going to refer to him as. Uh, Mr. N was a decent student in Iraq um, for anesthesiology. We've got a copy of his uh, transcript from school. He graduated. He did pretty well. Um, he decided he wanted to help the, the U.S. coalition forces a, a, in Iraq. So he made an application. We've got his name and address uh, for his family uh, well, in Iraq. You're not going to get this guy killed, right? Uh, no. I hope not. So he uh, applied to assist the uh, coalition forces. Um, it worked out really well for him because he got a letter of reference uh, stating what he did, including translation services uh, with mobile units um, while actually um, in combat. So he rode along with combat units and provided translation services. Um, because of this, he uh, actually kind of had to pay a little bit of a high price. And it's really hard to see, so we'll quote an excerpt from it. Um, because of his involvement, um, he is forced to live a secret life that he must hide from family and friends to protect them as well as himself from, cer- from torture and certain death at the hands of terrorists. We found this on a peer-to-peer file sharing network. So Mr. N uh, applied for asylum here in the U.S. to come to the U.S. And here is his application for his visa, including the location of his family, who, by the way, um, he hides from to protect them from torture and certain death at the hands of terrorists. Yeah, so let's take a minute to really let that sink in. We found And now we have Mr. N in the audience to confront us. At- yes. <laughs> Come on down. <laughs> You're the next contestant on the... Never mind. So think about this. We found in about four hours stuff on peer-to-peer file sharing networks that this gentleman, Mr. N, uh, helped the coalition forces his fi- put his family at risk and put his stuff on the internet so that the terrorists who wish to kill and torture he and his family can go search for it themselves. Yeah. What's that? I, I can't hear you. Ice? No. Vanilla Ice no longer performs. It's a good question. I don't know if they know about this. We did send a letter to this gentleman to let him know that his... Uh, his peer stuff was on being shared on Peter Fire Share Networks. Wait a second, though. But <coughs> so so speak, speaking of which, that's you know talking about the ethics. I mean, do these folks really know they're sharing it? Probably not, because you know they're probably a bunch of morons. Really? I mean, think about the average computer user that uses Peter Peer File Sharing. Yeah, um, we don't think that they do. And in mo- in ninety percent of the cases, we have addresses for these folks, so we've sent them letters via the U.S. Postal Service to let them know that this information is uh, being, being shared, and uh, we have not heard back from anyone, anyone at this time. Yeah, but so let's say you're sharing your information on a peer-to-peer network, right? And you get, information, you get a letter one day from an anonymous source saying they found your information on a uh, peer-to-peer network. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't you just assume they hacked into your computer? Possibly. We have lawyers and we have insurance, so yeah. Did we leave a forwarding address? I had no idea. We have not heard back from, from anyone. We have the addresses of the family and so forth from, from the applications, and we're doing the best we can, honestly. So let's talk about the defense. Fuck that. This is DEF CON. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, all right, I'm going to talk about the defense a little bit. Only because I thought this was really interesting. So the Brian Krebs article that came out Wednesday li- linked to a company called Taversa that will provide professional services for your company. You pay them, and they search peer-to-peer file sharing networks for your intellectual property and so forth. 
great. They also have services for individuals, such as these morons that we found their stuff on peer-to-peer file sharing networks. The problem is, in an ironic twist of fate, you click on the personal services link and it's 404. Wah, wah, wah. So, in conclusion, uh, apparently our security education isn't reaching the unwashed masses. Um, that makes my job really fun. <laughs> and it gets me on a panel at DEF CON. Okay. So, really, how do we accomplish some of this stuff as an industry? I mean, or do we care? Uh, clearly, uh, sharing stuff on peer to peer file sharing networks is bad, and everybody shares too much. There's legislation to doing? change this stuff. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I forgot to put my belt back on. <laughs> Rich, you need help? Fail. Dave will help you. Uh, I, was, I was leaning over to say something really, you know, like thought-provoking about how... how, how thought-provoking, yeah. right. Uh, <laughs> I see Rich with his belt. <laughs> it wasn't so, thought-provoking. It was provoking. <laughs> In any case, the goods are out there. And uh, so if you want some more information, uh, this presentation will also be available at uh, paul.com.com, and you can follow both Mick and I on Twitter. And a uh, big thanks to, to Mick for working on this uh, presentation and this research with me. So I uh, hope you had fun. And uh, now I'll turn it over to our next guest. So remember I told the story before about the kinetics thing and us stashing the alcohol. I'd like to bring uh, Bushy up, Scott. He was the individual who helped me. And uh, so he's the guy that was digging the fake holes that the security was trying to pick up. And the reason I brought him up here is because he's never going to talk to me again. So his epic fail is thinking I wouldn't tell all of DEF CON that today is his birthday and he's trying to hide it because he doesn't want to get too drunk tonight. Can you feel the love? Yeah. Yeah, he does have the keys to my house. So I'm yeah. Hey, Rich, you still got your pants on, buddy? Right. He does know the alarm code. That is all. So when you see him around at the parties this evening. Happy um, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. And many more. You smell like a monkey, and you look like one too. Robocop. <laughs> and for those of you who didn't hear that, was Rick. We're gonna talk later. I uh, I want to go search for myself on peer-to-peer -peer traffic networks now. It's all right, Dave. I already got it all. Don't worry. It's you safe with me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking of this weekend in Tijuana, and there was a donkey and a mm, thong. Goats. And Dude, I had goats. a donkey show story. For real. Do you really have a donkey show story? Well, we never made it to the show. <laughs> 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 then you, don't, then you don't have a donkey show story. We have a donkey show story? What? <laughs> All right, here's my donkey show story. So I'm 18 in Juarez. And <laughs> this can only go wrong. Uh, anyway, I have not hidden this. And so, you know, you're trying to go, look, I'm 18. Rule number two, Rich. Strip clubs Rule are legal. Alcohol is legal. I was in Navy ROTC at the time. So me and my buddy were basically the drivers are like ridiculous. They see the short hair. They go, donkey show, donkey show. And finally, our friend's like, and we're drunk. He's like, yeah, come on. All right, we hop in this cab. We pay a buck. So we're in the back streets of Juarez at this point where people disappear. And pulls up to a house that's not even a full house, and we walk in, and it was clearly a bordello, and we were told we make our own show with the women, with the big dude with the shotgun behind the thing. Um, and that's, we left, so that's the end of the story. Not that exciting. So we never did go to the donkey show. You know what, for that, I think you should have to take your pants off again. <laughs> Dear God, get away from me. So speaking so of fail... Just Laptop came, fail? I, I just came yeah, in, sure. and someone was talking about Donkey Show. Can someone fill me in? No. no. <laughs> no. You really don't want to do it. I think it's a myth. <coughs> Asinine? Yeah. <laughs> I need the adapter. Wait, asses and donkeys? Dave, what? Can you VGA oh adapter? So, so how many I'm, people I'm, are running a peer-to-peer -peer client right now searching for stuff? Please do. 
Please do. You'll have fun. God, somebody's really. got it. You know what? I, I would have if so I could get bandwidth. Who, who's running a peer-to-peer file sharing client right now and searching for stuff but doesn't want to admit it? <laughs> Seriously, that works. On All right, crowds. look. If you're sitting next to somebody who's running a peer <laughs> There we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so while we're waiting for this, has anybody tried different tones with their badges yet? Because... It seems like with my my uh, speaker badge, if we play an eleven like was eleven thousand two hundred hertz tone, yeah. it started blinking in what looked like either Morse code or binary. So does everyone realize this is uh, able to listen to you? Yeah. Read the source. Right. It's Morse code. Okay, they totally hacked this all because we're all wearing wiretaps, and Wire you know it doesn't matter whether you're not wearing one or not. The guy next to you is. You're all tapped. <laughs> <laughs> And that's our snake on why you're tapped. <laughs> Tap that. All on the floor. Tap that. From one to four. That's cool. <laughs> this is why we let Beaker do the poetry. <laughs> but he's probably still in his underwear doing push ups. Who knew? It's awesome. It's making me see funny things. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's good for you. Absolutely. Yes. So, hi. My name's. Um, this is barely working. I can't hear myself, anyways. My name's James Arlen. You might hi, know me. Hi, James. James. You might James. know me better as Mercurial. James, put the microphone up to your mouth. It's kind of like it at the rest area. But you've. T- <laughs> Self referential fail. <laughs> Um, I, I, as, as I was saying before I was so rudely interrupted um, <clears throat> you, uh, you might know me better by different names and, and stuff and I have some opinions Hey you in the bushes <laughs> Sorry It's amazing how interestingly you get pwned your first time doing this with these folks <clears throat> I really I'm, just need to lose your, your any, any respect of shame whatsoever Dude we're entirely good with that. So the security industry is, um, well, we're, we're completely fucking ourselves. That's my whole point right now. Um, the problem is that we never really examine ourselves. Some of you may have noticed some news that happened this week where uh, we didn't do a good job of examining ourselves. That's all I'm going to say about that part. So in the past, we had lots of security. Security was easy. Because you could point at it, you could touch it, you could uh, feel it. <laughs> you're not, you're you're not talking about security, are you? <laughs> I know what you did last summer. <laughs> <clears throat> we had guilds, we had seals, we could obfuscate hey, things. Hey, seals. <laughs> we occasionally had physical security. <clears throat> Rich. Computer security is more difficult. We've had great... Th- this bread is awesome. Um, we had theories. We did a lot of work in the 1970s. Um, we had Multics. The U.S. military did awesome stuff. Cambridge University did awesome stuff. We had these research microkernels that were actually secure. They would only execute what they were supposed to execute when they were supposed to execute it. Guess what we did? We got religion, baby. The religion is awesome. Everybody in this room is completely suckered by the religion. Well, I'm Catholic, so I know I am. (laughs) Pwned, baby, pwned. So everybody knows what religion is, right? We we had to introduce religion in this talk. Oh, we got a hand up here. Somebody wants a beer. A a, a distraction? I I might actually buy that. Everybody has best practices, right? How many people working in security do best practices? The best you could possibly do... You're all friggin' wrong. You do common practices. You do the same shit the other guy is doing. Because that way you're safe. You have habitual responses. <clears throat> when you start to salivate as you press the button. Do you really think that adding more blinky lights and shiny things is making your shit more secure? 
point of the tipping point it is. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm sorry. Which religion are you part of? Gladwell. I find this interesting. Um, one of them has three. <laughs> the other one has six. The other one has 25. Rich is an ass. I am also an ass. You're a certified ass. You're an application security specialist. Yes. So is Jack Daniel. And in fact, he is wearing an ass hat. He's got an ass hat. Oh. Yes, he does. He's got an ass hat and everything. Cannot underestimate the curmudgeon in the crowd. Um, that does not count whether or not you are gold, platinum, silver, or whatever. That is 25 certs, baby. Do you have any of those certs? Hell no. And you're not certified. I, I am Bible. a certified ass, and in a minute we'll, we'll get to a certification problem I have. Um, you know you're supposed to tell everybody that uh, they need to be a member of the same thing that you're a member of? Being a member of a club is very important. I'm not sure what else they do besides setting themselves up as members of clubs. I, I tend to question being in a club. And at the same time, I, it, it's almost sad to admit it, I'm in a friggin' club. I don't know how it happened. It was a bad day, I think. But, I mean... <laughs> There's this other group of people, and uh, they're, they're, they're kind of Are there of any suppliers. vendors in the audience? Anyone? Oh, there's one Wait, back there's there. Some, there's someone all the way back there. Who, who are you with? What was that? Who? Crap what? shoot? Did you say crap shoot? Mazu? Cloud shield? Cloud shield. Cloud shield. Cloud. I'm sorry, Beaker is not at the panel. <laughs> Wait, you... This is where you ask how many of us are with vendors but won't raise our hands. <laughs> <laughs> how many of you are with vendors but won't admit it? <laughs> How many, nice. people, how many people are sitting next to people who work for vendors? <laughs> nice. See, how many you people know, work in ProServe? I guess One. I do. Yeah, I, 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 how many yeah, people are right sitting here. next oh, yeah. to people that work in ProServe? There we go. How many people are sitting next to people that are wearing their underwear? Rich, My God! <laughs> that, that is disturbing. <laughs> Rich, don't raise your hand. <laughs> At this point, who really cares? <clears throat> Do you sell hardware or software? Do you love your blinky lights? I love my blinky lights. Are you part of the pundit and media group? Shit. <laughs> Half this panel is. <laughs> We're all pundits. You, you all know about the dogma thing, right? The, the shit monster? That's exactly the one. Your, your dogma ran over my karma? Or your karma ran over my dogma? It, it happens. It happens I'm to all of drunk. us. <laughs> the point is that it's completely frigging arbitrary. Have you met your iPod data thief in the company that you work for? You ever had an iPod connected to a laptop and you freaked on their heads because their iPod was connected to their laptop? What do they do with their laptop at the end of the day? Take it there home and connect go. their iPod to it. Sec Barbie wins with the they take it home. Which problem are you trying to solve? Complex passwords. How many people memorize their passwords? I oh. memorize your password. <laughs> <laughs> Floor bread. Mm. Floor. Put it in your mouth. <laughs> Floor bread for the win. How many people have used blood on the wall metrics to solve a problem? Yeah. That works. How many people say no habitually? No. Wait, no to what? Because my instinct is just to say no. That's not what you said last night, Dave. <laughs> well, look, I gotta. Never mind. <laughs> I'm very worried about this guy. <clears throat> How many people stop at the end of logical security? Have you ever walked around and looked at people's desks? Holy shit. How, wait, how do you define logical security? Uh, only exists in the computer world. As soon as you print it, you're not responsible. No. It happens. So uh, we need to fix this. 
Um, this is my call to all of you to stop failing epically. We need lots more individual contributions. Lots more. Lots more R&D. Uh, R&D doesn't lead to blinky lights and shiny things either. Um, no, I, I refuse to believe that. I read in the magazine just a couple of days ago. Let's go back to pundits and media and how they're screwing you over for good. Fuck you. <laughs> Says the former Garner analyst. Please read liquidmatrix.org for your Security Digest needs. We need to move to an age of enlightenment. Woohoo! Th this happened once before. Don't know that it's worked out so well, so I'm going to give you an easier path. <laughs> and frankly, because I fail myself, <clears throat> we need to admit that we have a problem. How many people are tired of doing the same thing they did last year? And yet, yeah. Dave, you're on the panel again. Well, I was, I was more of a per No, never mind. You guys are terrible. Um, how many people realize that you're doing it to yourselves? You I like to do it to myself. I think that's what happened to my shoulder. <laughs> I do, do you it get to less myself. diseases that way. Yeah, I do it to myself over and over again. Yeah, like, no look, I've got to be honest. I've been sitting next to Rich Muggle this entire panel. I think he just did it to himself. <laughs> Which I can't understand why. All I'm saying, two words. Horsecock. <laughs> and if you can't love yourself, who can you love? A hooker named Barbie. <laughs> oh, wait, not you. I'm sorry. You know, that was the first thing about It's coincidence. It's coincidence. Yeah. I don't think number of four applies to anyone on this panel. Five doesn't either. <laughs> Baby seal, anyone? Most dog food was only for old people. <clears throat> Let's actually give a shit for a change. I mean, you just, you're at DEF CON. I mean, you should go back next week and totally fucking pwn your world, right? Right, but the problem is, is that once you have passion about something, somebody with a middle management job wants to take it away from you because you'll make them look bad. Get rid of them. Are you, advocating, are you advocating murder? No, I'm advocating that you get the fucking C job. Oh. Fire the bastard. Quine, please come to the front desk. Paging Quine, please come to the front desk. <clears throat> you need to own the fact that you suck. All of us do. I own it every friggin' day. Hey, so were you a goth kid as a child? <laughs> yes, I was. I, I shall immediately launch into a uh, special dance mode for you. <laughs> <clears throat> Who would pay to see him do the robot right now? I mean, come on. Right here. Right here. I got five bucks. <laughs> Who's going to match dance it? If you want to, you can do the dance. <laughs> All right, give me five bucks. <laughs> easy come, easy go. Wait, just, just give me wait, a moment. Do we require music? Just, just give me a moment, and then I'll give you this back. Wait, if you have Mr. Roboto on your lap, we're all going to beat you up. <laughs> I'm going to put this in the like... same place that Rich put his money. <laughs> oh. No, there's no audio on this one. Keep talking while I can find it. Oh, shit. I have to keep talking, but you've taken my slides away. Now I have nothing. Come on, Rich. Can't your iTunes go faster? This is a Mac after all, right? Well, he's, uh, he's just so happy he doesn't have to deal with UAC. <coughs> scrolling. Madly scrolling. I can't believe I've just tucked $5 into my pants that I got from that guy. Yeah. <laughs> that I got from that guy. <laughs> <laughs> That he Transitive got from trust somebody. fail. <laughs> Transitive that trust That I got fail. for throwing bottle caps at that guy. <laughs> Poutine! Like I said, paul.com.com forward slash onosworked.jpg. You know it's just know scary. <laughs> And as I said before, there are some things on the internet that cannot be unseen. 
So I look to my left, I see something horrible. Then I turn to my right. Oh, that's not any better. <laughs> it's everywhere. Right. It's like so, MX. Do I, do I still have to dance for my $5 at this yeah, point? Yeah, no, you, have to, you have to dance. You have to do the robot. Someone, everybody sing along. This is the part where, much like Rich Mogul, I fall off the stage. <laughs> hmm? That's a painful personal experience that I choose not to share. The retarded robot? Is that what you meant? <laughs> oh. <laughs> you, sir, we know. No, bread. that was much more useful than Rich's robot. <laughs> I, I would like to point out that for the first time ever, as a newbie to this particular panel, I've completely failed. <laughs> you did not regain your self-respect. Speaking of, speaking of fail, um, why did you people come listen to us? Look, we did this last this is year, the second and you year came in a back. Row. You knew what this was. It was horrible last year. It's just as bad this year. We were funny you last no year. Excuse. What does that say about this year? You have no one to blame but yourself. Free bread. So every time I look to my left or right and I think that these people are sick, I think that you people watched it. Come and next, we're going to have the largest nipple contest and see which one of our panelists has the largest nipples. I, I sure hope there aren't any questions. Like, really? No, really. Are there, wait, who has... Does anybody have a... Uh, did we leave anything unquestioned? We talked about donkey shows. Spies in Iraq. Yeah, mobile devices. Otherwise, we're done. Go away. There's other shit to watch. <laughs>